Boya. I'm one of the students of Grandmaster Yip Man. Uh, I learned my Kung Fu in Hong Kong. So let's talk about the dummy. I mean the Wing Chun dummy. We also have few other names. One called Mui Fa Chong because we need the space like a Mui flower. So we call Mui Fa Chong. And the way it design look like a human being. So we call it Mui Yan Chong also. And the Chong original make is supposed to install in the ground, like this diagram here, shows you the top part of the dummy is round, made of a trunk, and the bottom part is square, and we have to dig a square hole in the ground. And later on, 1949, since Yiman came into Hong Kong, and he modified, modified the Zhong into this way. That's what we've been using now. And most of the Zhong, same, but only the difference is the bottom here in the air, instead of go all the way down to the ground. And we also have two pieces of wood supporting the Zhong, so like spring, and the, and even better. So after this, uh, Man invent this, I mean modify this John. And in the old days, I would say like um, the 50s, not too many people knows how to play the wooden dummy. Because the wooden dummy, you have to complete the three forms, Sunim Tao, Cham Kyu, and Biu Ji. And later on, then you work on the Zhong. The Zhong is refine your techniques. And the Zhong is not a weapon. Zhong is a, an equipment to make sure your hands in the right position, so you waste no position, you waste no distance, and that is the job useful. And someone, they have a wrong idea about the job. They keep thinking all the techniques from the job is for fighting, which is not true. This job, just an equipment, it works as a typewriter. You can't learn anything from typewriter, but you could use the typewriter to do a better job for writing. Chong set up. If this chong belongs to yourself, you have to set it up like fit your height. And if the chong belong to a school or belong to a group, then you have to set up the chong. This chong here off the ground, four inches, four inches. That's a regular standard size. And um, this suppose could take it out. Whenever you don't use the jong, you have to 
take all of these arms out. Otherwise, somebody might walk into it and get hurt. So these arms, before you praying, you have to check and make sure it's all right. And we call this strong stand. Whenever you use the Kung Fu to fight someone, you have to stand a strong stand. So we call this strong stand. This, this arm here, how come a dummy have three arms? Because this dummy designed as a guy who knows Kung Fu. So this arm represents the low punch. Low punch. So we have this arm here. These two arms here, we call this Do, Chinese moon. So we have outdoor, we have indoor, but this side here is indoor, and this side here is outdoor. Why? Because this is the door, let's say. Here is the door. So hand like this, this side is indoor, and this side is outdoor. So, but this joint, the way it designed, go like this. So, this is indoor. This side is indoor. So, that is the way the joint design. But, a lot of people, they misunderstand. They keep saying, this is indoor, this is outdoor, yes. But the hands, I mean the arms here, the way they design, this side of the arm is indoor. This side of the arm is outdoor. The reason why that's the way they design. And this, we call Biu Sao. And this all the way go up to the neck. And this is the Bong Sao. Whenever you use the bones out, must be this part, this part touching the strong arm. And we also have Hyun Ma. Hyun Ma. When you walk into the dummy, you not just step into, you have to walk, like making a circle. And this part of your leg have the against the, the John's leg here. Biu Sao. Bong Sao. Hyun Ma. And Tan Da. And this guns out here. Just move your hip here. Move your hip. Instead of moving your arms, but the arms stay. Move your hip. Not moving your arm, but hip. And this we call it Kwan Sao. Kwan Sao, how to form the Kwan Sao? Kwan Sao, one Tai Bong Sao and one tan sao, so we do the kwan sao. Kwan sao is blocking the middle part of uh, techniques. This tan sao is different. Before this one here, we just use the hip. But this one now here, pull it out here. Use the hand. 
use the hands to do this gang sound. And this one here, hyun sound, and this one up, and do together, same time. And this one up, and this one down. So, do it together. Every section, we have uh, closing this way. Whenever you see this, it means a section is over. Okay, so uh, let me see the second section, please. Second section. The first section is to tell us how to get the center line. And we'll a little bit around in the center line. This section between you to the parks out. As I explained it from the first section, this is outdoor hand. This is an outdoor sign, and this is an indoor sign. So, for example, if you throw me a punch here, I park like this, okay. But if I park this, you hand my come from here, and because my hand going out, and your hand coming in, then I can block it because different direction. I have to going out my hands and your hands coming in here. So do it again. Punch me if I park like this, okay. See, do it again. Okay, if the other hand come in. This is outdoor. Outdoor, we could do the parks out. But we not allowed to park indoor sign. Indoor parks are no good. If I do the indoor, do it again. Throw me a punch. Indoor, and your your punch come in here. Then my hand on the way going out, and I have to stop my hand. Then come back. Then will be too late. I have no time to make my hand come back here. So that's why we have to do the parks out, outdoor sign. Instead of indoor sign, no good. That's why this John design this way. So if I park here, it means I park outdoor, okay? And don't do indoor. Parks are always outdoor. Okay? So now. When you do the parks out, my hand's still in my center line. This side, same. So do the parks out on the center line, on the center line, on the center line. Not stay there and use the hand to do it. No, we have to twist a little bit your hip, then your hand from the shoulder to the center line. That's the way to play this. This timing is really important. The hand coming back, the hand going out, the other hand going out. This timing is very, very important. You gotta notice this. Uh, section three, please. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. The timing of this technique is very important. Both hands together. For me, a punch. So there's two ways to play it. Original way. Another way. For me, punch. If I hit you, you fly away, then I have to do the side kick. If I hit you, you stay. Then I have to do this front kick. Show it again, do it again, okay? tell us which techniques is important so we could I mean we have to do that technique like focus on the technique the mean technique I mean such as this and kick if I could kick here my thumbs out here can reach I do this sign. Other bones out, then kick. I could kick, then the hand here, kind of off. If I make my hand go to hit the, the jaw, then uh, too tight here, it's no good. So either one. So, but this is, this technique is the kicking technique. So we just able to do the kick. Never mind about the tons out here. Could touch the jaw or not. Section is showing the pole pie, jiang, pole pie, pole pie. Uh, we're not going to hit on the jong, but make sure two hands on the jong, then use the energy. Make sure two hands on the jong, use the energy. On the strong use energy. Okay.
And this section, the difference from the other section is this section we kick the bad horse. Hello. Kick this foot here. I do it again. Kick this one here. Usually, we kick the front, use the front foot and kick. But this one, this section, so us, we kick the bad horse. Kick the bad horse. Uh, do this section again. Section train us use the hand and the foot same time. I mean training the timing. After this here and place there, then whenever the foot go and the hand go together. So the, the timing is important. If I throw you a punch and you, bond, you, you grab my hand and I have to use my foot and my arm together. So you pulling me toward to you and my step on you, okay? So, grab it. I don't have to use energy because you're pulling me. the last section. So a little bit complicated compared with the other sections. From Tai Bong Sao, up on the center line, then go up the upper part. And this one, same thing. And we have a technique like this. Usually, if man taught us, only one way to do it about this technique. But also, have a way to do it this way. So sometimes, a certain group of yi man students, they just learn either one of the techniques. I'm sewing here both. 
And this section here, the last, we ending the, the song with, uh, we call it uh, so gang sao and the food together. So we have gang uh, sao and a gang sao and a gear together. Then these three things together. Two hands and one kick together. I'll do it again. this jong with why we need a jong because we doubt about our techniques from the forms maybe not in the right position so we need this jong to mold mold our hands so make sure uh, we don't waste no space that's why we need a jong here so we have all the different sections the nature of the each section is different. So uh, as what you just see before. And we separate into different sections, which is not that important about the sequences. Sometimes you could just play the certain section from the jong. You don't have to from the section one all the way to section eight. You just choose few sections to measure your arms, measure your techniques, make sure that you are, your hands in the right position. Sometimes you spend like, uh, some time to, to do all, only one technique. You keep, you keep practice one technique on the jong. Or sometimes you could even take a jong, one of the jong arm out and practice your kicks on the jong. So you could use this jong arm to train your arms harder by doing this. So this jong here, not only the play, the jong's forms. Uh, it happened in Hong Kong when Master Yip Man always go and teach private lessons and sometimes he forgot which section uh, he been taught that student so he usually asks the students uh, uh, what section you up to maybe some of the students they want to learn more from him so they just say um, more instead of tell him the truth let's say the student learn up to three section and he said ah five so and that's why next time the student can i mean no way could learn the other two sections so he missed two sections but he had to continue to learn to finish the job complete the job and after he complete and he still missed two sections so he learned it from somewhere else and put them together so the sequences is different but the student won't tell the truth and say ah uh, uh, because uh, this and that so and that's why my sequences are different he always say ah oh, that's the way grandmaster taught me so everything blame on the grandmaster so later on then a lot of people play the sections of the jong, the sequences is different. And they keep saying, uh, you might have a few different ways to teach jong. This is not true. There's only one way to play the jong, I mean the sequences. Now, I would like to uh, invite William Moy and play the whole sections, all sections of the jong.
grandmaster Yin Man, the way he teaches Zhong, he always only teaches two sections, and the rest, the other advanced or senior students to complete. So now I'm showing that two sections. Usually, grandmaster Yin Man uh, teaching his students. So the rest, he usually invite the senior students, the Kung Fu brothers, and teach the younger brothers. That is the way Yi Man teach the wooden dummy, I mean, Mui Fa Zhong or Mu Yan Zhong in Hong Kong. Yanjong, translated word for word, means wooden man trunk. In other words, wooden dummy. Originally, it was known as a muifa jong, muifa meaning plum blossom. Since it does closely resemble a man as it was designed to, it is generally known as the muk yanjong. Muk yanjong is a training device exclusive to Wing Chun. It is the final stage of training for hand and foot techniques. Therefore, those who have studied the 108 Mukyanjung techniques must have first achieved a high level of proficiency in the art of Wing Chun. Those who truly know all of these techniques number but a few. Of those few, only a handful were taught by Yip Man himself. The 108 Mukyan Zhong techniques include practically all the Wing Chun hand and foot techniques. They are, in effect, those techniques in various combinations and in every conceivable application. They can be broken down into three categories. Number one, neutralization maneuvers. Number two, confrontations and counterattacks. Number three, blatant attacks. These techniques finalize one's hand, foot, and body positions. Precision is of the utmost importance. The techniques train one to respond to an attack with a counter that is not only instantaneous and spontaneous, but the most appropriate and therefore the most effective. Incidentally, some Mukyang Zhong techniques may not seem to conform to Wing Chun's theory of economy of motion. For example, some of the changes of body positions from left to right and vice versa may seem unnecessary but they're actually done to compensate for the fact that the Mukyan Jung itself doesn't turn as a real opponent would when struck or blocked with force. Until a fully automatic Mukyan Jung is invented that is capable of reacting more realistically, one will simply have to live with concessions like these. When the 108 techniques were first taught by Yip Man, they were taught on very irregular occasions and under different circumstances. As a result, there have been questions as to what the proper sequence should really be. 
actually, it isn't all that important whether one knows the absolutely correct sequence or not. What is important is that one has truly understood them and has mastered them thoroughly.